Well, tomato season is officially over, even though I did spot a few tomatoes growing. Um, but tomato season's over, and there's still stuff that you can be growing in the fall, at least here in Virginia. So I thought I would bring you into my peaceful home kitchen garden today, let you look around and see what can still be grown even when tomato season is finished. This bed was going to be empty for fall. I did transplant a few little lettuce plants over here from a bed where I seeded lots of lettuce over there just to have them spread out a little more so some of these heads can get bigger. Now we may have had one really light frost here in the last three, four weeks. At least it was predicted for our county. If we had one here on our property, I don't think it really affected anything. And we have not had any freezes yet. And it looks like there's still another three weeks before we're gonna see anything below 35 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm excited that all of my volunteer tomato plants, not tomato, potato, all of the volunteer potato plants are gonna keep growing and giving me a second harvest of potatoes. So there shouldn't be anything in these beds as far as what I've planted for fall, but a lot of the plants you see coming up are volunteer potatoes. We had potatoes here in the spring and you always end up missing a few of them when you're harvesting and that's what pops up in the fall. Leftover zinnias. I have taken the heads off most of these broccoli and this one has gone to seed so I've left it for the butterflies and the pollinators to enjoy. There's a lot of stuff that I'm not harvesting from anymore but I am leaving the flowers for the pollinators to be enjoying. We have cauliflower in the front row and around the corner. I haven't seen any heads forming yet, but the inner leaves are starting to twist around themselves. So since it is about three weeks or more till a freeze, I'm very hopeful about getting cauliflower in time. I'm just about finished. I have a gallon left of the cauliflower from my spring harvest that I work on usually with breakfast. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting another batch frozen for winter. Leftover zinnias, and this is where I actually saw a tomato plant when I was out here watering this morning. I didn't pull the tomato plant that was over here. These were like extras that I threw in the ground after I finished planting my other tomato plants and then I ignored them all summer. And it's actually growing some tomatoes. So that'll be fun if they ripen. This was a volunteer winter squash. I don't expect to get anything from it, but I am letting them flower so all the bees can enjoy the pollen from there. Some volunteer potato plants have come up amongst the cauliflower. And see that little white butterfly? That is a cabbage moth. They are not your friend if you're trying to grow any brassicas. Cauliflower, cabbage, kale. Um, they lay eggs and those caterpillars hatch out and they love to eat your plants. This bed has broccoli, which I also just let stay planted fairly close together. These are some nasturtiums that self seeded from the spring and there are some broccoli heads already coming along. So I just have to keep checking these over and harvesting them when they're ready. So that'll be nice to add to the freezer. This is the first of several beds of strawberries. I did not get these pulled out and replanted in time. I think it's a little bit too late now. I'm thinking they're just gonna stay here. I'll put a little bit of compost on top, but not too much because they can die if you bury them too deeply. And we'll just have to upplant them next fall. So the beds will be just be low next spring. I, I did attempt a spinach planting in here and you can see only three or four spinach made it but I went ahead and transplanted lettuce around the edges from this thick bed of lettuce over here. Most of the peppers we've taken out, I left a few in here that still have peppers that can keep ripening. And I've left some basil in here for the bees to keep enjoying the flowers on. Otherwise, it's just a messy fall garden bed. So here we've got crisp mint lettuce, and I think this is a gentilina. 
Mm, no, it's not Gentilina. I forget the name of this lettuce. But anyway, it's lettuce. Carrots in the back, which I think may not get to their full size before it gets cold. I can always row cover them and give them a chance to grow a little more. But it was really just an experiment to see if I could grow them before cold came. That kale self-seeded the spring because it had a bunch of kale in this bed and it dropped seeds and I've been harvesting from that and just letting it grow. And that's a volunteer potato plant. This bed was transplants of broccoli from the other bigger broccoli bed. And then potatoes also started sprouting in this bed because again, we didn't find all of the babies in the spring, but that's great. I would love to have more fall potatoes that really just helps to ensure that I've got a good potato seed harvest ready for spring planting. And this had all kinds of crops this summer that have all been cleaned out. And they're just some bean sprouts and some tomato sprouts and weeds. And we'll just be weeding that sometime in the next week or two just to clean the beds up. This is where all the watermelon was this fall. And we pulled that and then potatoes started growing themselves in these beds. These started kind of late though with sprouting the potatoes. So I don't think they're gonna get much done in the next three weeks before we have a chance of freezing coming, but we'll see. We'll dig them up in two or three weeks and see what we get. There's a dahlia that's all over the place. Kale. I've pulled out most of the purple kale that was in this edge and just left the regular curly leaf kale. Been harvesting and dehydrating and eating in smoothies. Now, I do attempt to eat some foods that I don't like every year. Every year I tried watermelons, never liked them until this year. And I'm so glad that I like watermelon now. But the thing I still don't like are cooked greens any type spinach kale collards any of them i can eat them in a salad i can eat them in the soup i can eat them in a smoothie but i did try some just last week i ate a spoonful because i try every year to eat something that i don't like and they still tasted like deliciously seasoned rubber so still not a fan of cooked greens these are the asparagus beds and we will be cutting them at the ground level once they're all dried for the fall, just like a chop and drop. And then we'll top the beds back off with compost. And in the spring, we'll top the beds off again with wood chips. And that will help minimize any weeds coming up because weeds are such a big headache in asparagus. But these raised beds have made it very simple to keep them weed free. And these strawberries I transplanted over a month ago. It's probably been four or five weeks. This is the first time I've done a strawberry transplant and they basically all survived. I think it could be from the three weeks straight of rain that we had, but they are doing great. They're already sending out babies and I have had to pick a few strawberries off of these plants already. So this strawberry bed's looking good. This is where I had wildflowers all summer, which I really enjoyed. And I want to do a big section of wildflowers outside of the garden next year. Something in the ground instead, so it's easier to just mow them over at the end of the season. Because we had to rip all the wildflowers out of those beds, and that was a little bit of a headache. All right, spinach is doing well more strawberries and this is where I harvested from to plant the strawberries over there. This is our garlic that we planted just a couple days before that rain came in September. So they've had a great start. This did have a cucumber on it. I'll probably just leave it for winter. I don't see a reason to move it because I might plant something else on it in the spring or maybe I will move it. Never know. Basil letting the bees enjoy. So you can see how low the bed has sunk down. It's at least one brick down. So that means it's probably that low underneath all of these. What would have been better for me to do is come in and take all of these out, refill the bed, replant, but I didn't do it. I did get that bed replanted by pulling out 
all of the strawberries here. So I don't know. And I still haven't decided yet how many beds of strawberries I actually want to have. I just need to sit down with my garden map and figure out what I want to use the beds for next year. I may just let the strawberries take over everything because I do want a lot of strawberries, but I have to calculate how much space I want for other crops as well. One more lovely dahlia still giving us flowers for bouquets. This is where all the Roma tomatoes were this summer. So there are obviously lots of little Roma tomato plants popping up, but there's also chamomile popping up, which I actually want to transplant and put somewhere else. I want to keep it. Um, and there's potatoes popping up. So these are all volunteers. This is a weed. Good chicken food though. More potato volunteers. And potato volunteers and spinach. This is spinach that I seeded from my own seed from plants that I collected in the spring. They're doing terrific. It's time for another harvest. And they were Bloomsdale Longstanding. And these are also Bloomsdale Longstanding from a seed packet. They were not from my seeds. And another bed of strawberries that I did not pull from, that has sunk very low. I wish I knew if there was really gonna be three to four weeks, I really should dig these up. I don't know. Another dahlia. And this is what I plan to do with all my dahlias next year, is grow them inside these tall cages. They do so much better to have support. All the other ones end up laying on the ground and you can't, take advantage of as many of the flowers. And in this bed, we have some crisp mint lettuce and a very large sage plant. I did rip out the sage plant that was in this corner. It did not handle the three weeks of rain. It started dying. Sage, I believe is a little bit of a deserty plant. It likes to have dry feet. That one handled the rain okay, but the one in the back did not. These three top trellis beds are empty as in volunteers. It's a lettuce plant. And the strawberries that are still alive in the towers. The naked empty bottoms. And the garlic. I consulted with my very handsome gardening partner and we decided we would at least do this bed. If we've got three weeks or more until a good freeze, then maybe these strawberries will make the transplant later in the season. So you can see we've started this part of the wall. We're digging the plants out and saving the ones that have a decent root ball. And then topping the bed off with mushroom compost, adding in peat moss. The peat moss not only adds acidity, which the strawberries love, but it will also help with water retention. And then I'm also gonna work in these alfalfa pellets that I've spread in. These will do a delayed nitrogen release in the next four to six months um, for the plants. So we're working on the beds. Obviously we have way more strawberry plants than we're gonna need to replant this wall. So we've let friends and family know and some are gonna come over and pick up some of the plants for their own gardens. And the rest, probably the next 10 foot section, my husband's just going to weed eat these strawberries and then when we bury them with another six inches or so of compost, it should kill those plants. And we've got three buckets full that we've already harvested that we can start transplanting and we're going to work our way down the bed. Well, it looks like there was a strawberry plant slaughter on our property today. Hopefully we made the right choice. It will stay warm for the next three to four weeks, at least above freezing. And these plants will be able to establish their roots. And we'll have another big bed full of strawberry plants ready to go for spring. Also, if it could stay warm long enough for 
cauliflower harvest to come in, I will be thrilled. Don't they look so sad right now? Well, I hope that you have a blessing on your garden if you're still having produce come out in the fall. And if you live somewhere where winter is a break to the garden work, then I hope you're looking forward to your winter break as well. I am looking forward to the first fire inside. Haven't had one yet. It's been too warm, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. <laughs>